welcome to the Unleashed Greatness Podcast with your host, Jonathan Mitchell. The best in personal, emotional, spiritual, and business development. Well, hello everyone. It is I, Jonathan Mitchell. This is Unleashed Greatness. Thank you once again, as always, for tuning in. Just want to say a very appreciative and huge gratitude energy, power, love, thanks goes all out to you for just taking your time to listen in. So thank you. If you want to hear more from the from myself on the podcast or from our guests, please go to UnleashedG.com for find more podcasts, any coaching, any connect with me. I'd love to have you. Subscribe, share this episode or this podcast to whoever you feel inspired to do so. This episode is sponsored by NaturalMedicineMamas.com. Any help or advice or amazing products around natural or alternative medicine you can find there. And I uh, just want to say uh, we have some amazing things coming up this week. I'll kind of do a quick recap of what you can expect this week, but today is NBA Musings Day. I got to go over the NBA program and some cool things I've learned this week. So hope you like that. Tune in. Let's get going. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. So I am currently in the, like I said before, the NBA program. If you have not listened to this podcast, there are five shows. Monday is interview day. Yesterday we had Tony Watley had some amazing things going on about business and just his story about being a side hustle millionaire, literally being a side hustle millionaire. Really, really cool stuff. Today's NBA Musings Day. Get to talk about the NBA program and some cool things around entrepreneurship. Tomorrow is book review day, Thursday is article or story day, and then Friday I get to de- just to talk about whatever I'd like to talk about, which is fun. Um, today I want to re- go over one of the books I'm reading for economics called The MBA Roadside. And um, I should say Roadside MBA, I got it backwards, sorry about that. Lessons for Entrepreneurs, uh, Small Business Owners, and Executives. Uh, the part we're reading about now is about getting prices right, trying to find out what the market that you are in is willing to pay or not. And they have a really interesting part of the book where they talk about uh, several businesses that did not charge the same thing for different products. So as an example from the the book itself, there's a lady who owned a uh, dog care business and she sent out coupons to different subdivisions because she was in a place that was kind of out of the way, but also in between some main um, main home locations and a city. So she was a great place for people to drop off their dogs for home care. So she would charge different prices to different people based on where they lived by coupons. And she made a great living doing that. And she just sent out coupons saying this person will get this, this person will get that. It was very interesting to think of the same product or service being charged different things to different people. So one part of this book I wanted to read to you real quick is just it's what's called Maseo's Law. It's setting the right price for your services or products and what it depends on. So obviously the first one, and again, if you're entrepreneurship out there, if you're thinking about running a business or thinking about launching something or whatever, obviously you want to make profit and money. So this just kind of goes into how to find the right price for you and your market. Uh, setting the right price, what it depends on, number one is knowing your costs. A company needs to make sure, obviously, you have positive margins on the products and services it sells so that the right price price for anything must be greater than the cost it is to produce it. I know it sounds kind of silly, but a lot of times people don't take in consideration all the costs that do get involved, especially when it comes to any type of brick and mortar company or any hard product. You have not just the R&D cost to research and develop a new product, but also to store it, the inventory, the carryover costs. There's a lot of costs involved with physical products. Um, a great thing about going something digital is that you you can create a online course or an ebook or something like that, or even do training one on one with groups or or one on one training coaching. Those type of things, regardless of topic, you can charge more because the only thing you're really trading time for, I'm sure, say the only thing you're really sacrificing in those circumstances, the cost you have is your time. So you just got to make sure that if it's a product that all your costs are covered and if you have services or something digital that it's worth your time to do or that you're leveraging your time in a, in a better way. As an example, if you're a coach over no matter what topic from personal development to taking care of dogs to cooking, you could work with people one-on-one for, you know, there's some people who do it anywhere from, uh, I've, I've had some people charge... 
hundred to two hundred dollars an hour. Some people charge a thousand an hour. Some charge, you know, like a yearly fee of ten to twenty grand to work with someone for a year. There's a lot of ways to do it on a year basis. Or there's the group option where you can have twenty people and you charge each of them a hundred or two hundred dollars for the hour once a week. Um, and if you take same, if if you're uncomfortable with a high price point, because a lot of people sometimes are. Let's just say you're used to charging 50 bucks an hour, and let's just say you double yourself and you push yourself to charge 100 bucks an hour instead. You could do one-on-one person, a one-on-one coaching with one person for an hour and earn 100 bucks. Or you try a group coaching platform, get five to 10 people, charge 100 bucks, and you have five to 10 times the results. And you could probably be just as effective giving the same type of coaching you would have done on a one-on-one basis. So that's one way to leverage your time is by doing the same thing for multiple people as a group, either live or online or whatever else you want to do. Uh, next point as far as uh, finding the right price is customer's willingness to pay. So customer's willingness to pay will be higher in situations where they have a strong preference for the product. Um, their willingness to pay, uh, this certain company they talk about, listens for clues about their customer's willingness to pay and can charge higher prices than a margin plus their costs. As an example for someone's willingness to pay in this particular article, it just talked about how some people would talk about their preferences for other products. And so the people who are selling a certain product would listen for other products they bought or other, other uh, like the clothing they wore, the car they drive, trying to look for any clues they could to see if they could figure out what their price point would be <clears throat> for the services and products. Uh, next is segmenting your customers. C- companies can expand their market by having a lower priced option available for the most price sensitive consumers and a higher priced option for customers who want extras or will choose you no matter what. Um, the company I was talking about, the, the dog care, charges high prices for luxury suites but can offer coupons to customers who can easily choose a different dog care company. So this lady, she, she first off had two strategies. One, she offered different prices for different people in different locations based on the location and convenience located to her. Two, she would charge different amounts for uh, for obviously the different product sets, but she was able to be a one-stop shop. She wasn't one of these people who said, I'm only like a Walmart strategy when all she's going to serve is just people who could afford the cheapest option. She said, here's either the cheap option or here's a really super expensive, nice option. And that way she wasn't saying, it wasn't pushing away a customer because she was too a high price point or too low. And the next is finding opportunities to bundle. Willingness to pay for one product can often be enhanced by selling in a combination with others. Um, Like for instance, one of these music companies had a rent to own financing and their maintenance and replacement contract made parents more likely to buy an instrument for their, their kids. So in this circumstance, it's about finding a way to bundle either um, a hard, like a, like an actual physical product a digital product, like you, if you ever bought a digital program, all the time online you'll see these people say, hey, buy this book for fourteen ninety nine, and then they take you to the next page which says, hey, get this other book for another fourteen ninety nine, and then they take you to one more page and say, hey, you could do this one more product that complements this product for another 15 bucks. And if you're not careful, you can fairly easily spend up to 100 bucks just off of one $14 uh, purchase. And that's one strategy to use. But the other part of it is, and one thing I wanted to point out, no matter which of these strategies you want to look at, for me, it's about being in integrity with what you believe to be of value to someone. I personally can't stand as a consumer when I purchase something and I don't feel I got the value of which I paid for. And you don't want to rip people off. Like there's ethics involved and you want to be honest with what you are going through. And that goes both ways. So if you're giving a good product and you're charging, let's say, a higher price for it, but you know it's worth it, and if the consumer doesn't know that, it's your job to help educate them to let them know why that is worth more because of uh, the products, the materials, the whatever is inside of your product, business, or service that makes it worth more by the results that people get or something. It's up to you to be able to give that, but a great way to help people make the decision to buy is bundling it with something, whether that's a warranty or uh, some sort of maintenance contract, or some sort of um, guarantee, meaning you can have results within, like say as a coach, you can always say, if you don't see results in 90 days, I'll give your money back, or something like that. So there are lots of ways for you to feel and see success 
in your business with prices by using these these four things. So again, knowing your costs, number one. Number two is customers' willingness to pay. Three is segmenting your customers. And four is finding opportunities to bundle either other products or warranties or guarantees, something like that. Um, this, today's kind of a short day. I just want to make sure we get some good stuff out there. I love this book. If you have a chance, read Roadside MBA. Um, and we had a very interesting discussion about people's willingness to pay in class, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, until next time, this is UnleashedG.com, Unleashed Greatness. I am Jonathan Mitchell. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.